Hello everyone and welcome back to Anime on Draft, episode 13. I'm joined here with my two co-hosts, Rolando. Hi. And Mr. Andrew. Hello everyone. Uh, today we've got a little bit of a change from our normal, normal uh, show because we have three beers that we're going to be uh, trying and reviewing today. Not each three beers, but uh, I have one beer and my two co-hosts here each have their own beer. Um, we originally were starting out with the Koedo Shikoku, right? Yeah. But that was not available. For and everyone. so we also have the... <laughs> for everyone. And so uh, Rolando has the Koedo Shikoku. Drew, you picked up the Koedo Beniaka, right? And then I for- have the... Sierra Nevada Celebration Fresh Hop IPA from 2016, which I hope is you still just, good. You just couldn't oh. find another uh, imported Koedo beer, dude. Like, why don't you just go to Japan to get it? Like, what the fuck is wrong with you? I know. I should have just. I should have shipped it in. I should have had it one day shipped. That's <laughs> what I should have done. The get real, it through customs in one day now. The real question is why? Like, I was looking for that sweet potato beer first. And then I was That's like, "That's the one I have." Yeah. I'll get the shikoku, and then like maybe you guys can find it. And then you found the sweet potato beer, but not the shikoku. Not the. And shikoku. the one oh, I went though. to, <laughs> the Bevmo I went to had like a fucking like huge amount of the sweet potato one, and I saw the label for the shikoku, but they were all sold out. So I don't know. Yeah, complete <laughs> opposite so of mine. The sweet potato is <laughs> super popular up where you are. And yeah. the Shikoku is super popular down where we are. Apparently. So, I guess. Wow. I okay. Mean, <laughs> I wasn't ac- actually knows? sure exactly why we ended up with two beers. Um, and then I like was going to run to the store and grab a beer, but then uh, I felt really lazy today. And so I was just like, I'm going to grab what's in my fridge. And that's what's in my fridge. But uh, Sierra Nevada is dope, yeah. though, so it'll be good to talk yeah. about. It also that's explains good. why good Alec beer. has an IPA. Yes, it does. <laughs> okay, so I had a choice of two beers, and one was this, the Sierra Nevada, and the other was the Newcastle uh, Caledonian, don't, the red one, and I said, don't. no, <laughs> no, no, it was there, and I picked them both up, and I was like, nah, I'll drink an IPA. So That shows <laughs> that shows how bad the Newcastle is if you are willing to pick an IPA over something else. Yeah, no, it's awful. The Not the regular Newcastle. Regular Newcastle is okay, but the blue and the red yeah. one, the... They're just awful. They're like band-aids in your mouth. Anyways, um, also today we're going to be talking about uh, our trip to Anime Expo. And uh, so we, we'll have some more about that later. But let's go right into the beer drinking part. And um, I already introduced what beers we have. So how about, uh, Drew, you go ahead and start us off because you have the beer we were originally going to do. So this is Koedo. It's from Japan. Um, I'm not even, I guess it's Beniyaka. I probably butchered the shit out of that. Uh, But uh, what it says on the bottle, it is ale brewed with sweet potato and it is inspired by the spirit of Japanese artisan. Uh, Koedo beers showcase premium ingredients and modern craftsmanship. So whatever that means. Um, I poured this guy out and it is, it has no head and it, yeah, it's no head, almost no carbonation. It's kind of a dark brown. It is actually reminiscent of a Newcastle, uh, style, like ale, um, kind of that color. Um, but, uh, let me give this guy a smell real quick. What type of beer is, is that one? It says it's an ale. An ale. Um, that's all, nah, that's all it says. Red red ale. Oh okay. Um, so and it it has the distinct color, kind of a red ale. As I smell it, it smells like a sour. <laughs> um, yeah, it kind of smells like a sour. It's kind of interesting, but like I said, no head, almost no carbonation. But let me take a let me take a drink of this guy. Doesn't taste like a sour. <laughs> Good. It um, <laughs> does it taste uh, like is... sweet potatoes. Yes, it it very much so tastes like sweet potatoes. Sweet it's potatoes super starchy. Really, good, so. really? Yeah, it's super. It's super starchy and like really sweet. Let me take another drink. Yeah. 
definitely reminiscent of that taste of a of a uh, red kind of Newcastle style ale. I keep comparing it to that because that's probably what most people have had if they've had like an English style ale or a red ale, something along those lines. But super super starchy, um, almost no aftertaste, um, but hits you right up front with that sweet potato starchy flavor, which is actually really pleasant. I didn't think I would like it because I'm not like a huge fan of sweet potatoes. Um, I'm not a fan of like anything that's like sweet in general. And when I think of sweet potato, I think of like that spread at Thanksgiving where it's like sweet potato with brown sugar and marshmallows oh, mm-hmm. uh, melted over the top. And I hate that. <laughs> Don't ever. So serve what you're me telling that. me it's, is it's you're not a fan of like the sweet potato French toast with syrup on top that people make. No, at, at places. God, no. <laughs> you're in, you're in, don't even suggest that to me. I'll barf in your face. <laughs> that doesn't even sound um, good to me. And I like sweet things. Yeah. This is, it's, it's interesting. I think the sweet potato adds like a, a good, unique flavor that I'm not used to having. Um, and as I kind of look, I'm, I was at first looking through the glass, uh, but now if I look at like directly through the top, like at the beer, it's kind of like murky ish. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's really interesting. I, I like it. Um, I didn't think I would like it. I thought it was going to be like way too sweet um and just know all like the beer flavors but it actually melds really well um interesting story um the lady who was at the checkout at my bevmo was saying that she's had this one before and she it's like one of her favorite beers for some Mm. reason and she's like i don't know why no one buys this because it's like so good i'm like yeah i like try to to have new beers like once a week something like that she's like you're gonna like this because this is like really good so so she did not lie make sure she doesn't work at the men's warehouse (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> she she guarantees it you're gonna um, like the way you look let me take one more sip before i pass it on to give my uh final thoughts puff puff pass yeah. <laughs> two and go yeah it's it's interesting it's not it's not very bitter it's got those sweet potato starchy flavors and it's 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 good i wish it had like more carbonation or like any type of head. I think what maybe happened though, and I'm just I'm just remembering this now because I bought it a couple days ago. I was driving home with this in my car, and some idiot fucking cut me off, and I had to brake really hard, and it like flew off my passenger seat into the front. So maybe uh, that kind of messed with. Be glad the, it didn't break. Yeah, I was I was surprised it didn't break. Um, so maybe that has something to do with uh, the carbonation and things like that. But overall, I I really like this. It's 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 really good. Is so. it strong? The alcohol? Percentage? No. Uh, let me look what it says. Uh, it doesn't taste strong. Um, Seven point oh percent alcohol by volume. So I guess it is. That's strong. pretty strong. <laughs> That's a decent <laughs> amount. Yeah. It doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't taste like alcohol at all. It tastes like sweet potato and starch. Like that is what it tastes like. Um, I don't know. It, it doesn't taste alcoholy at all. So, Well, very cool. Um, I'm definitely going to have to pick it up because uh, I like sweet potatoes just in general. And uh, I think um, that sounds really good. So, Yeah, I think the weirdest thing for me is that it smells like a sour and it doesn't taste anything like how it smells. <laughs> I'm going to have to get it and see this weird. What, like, is it barnyardy? Is that why? Like, it's kind of like Yeah, stanky. it's like barnyardy and like... Maybe it's the potatoes. Putrefic- putrefication isn't the word but it's like i don't know it's like sour smelling <laughs> hmm. interesting all right well let's go ahead and we'll move on to rolando you've got the uh the replacement that couldn't be found um so koedo shikoku what's your thoughts on that one yeah so uh um what was the beer we had last week it was the um rogue the sriracha, rogue sriracha. right yes yeah. So when I went no, to buy we did it, something else, I thought. Was it? Did we? No, we did I, else I thought last it was. Week. What was last, what was last week's beer? Yeah. Episode 12. <laughs> <laughs> no, we don't have Oh, no, 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 no. Time. It was the Delirium oh, Nocturnum. That's yeah, right. that's right. That's that right. fucking, that's right. that yeah. pink elephant. Fuck yeah. that thing. <laughs> um, the, other, the other beer that pink smelled elephant. like a sour. Um, <laughs> yeah. When I, when, I went to, when I went to buy that beer. I was like, well, uh, it's my turn next week, so let me look. I went to the, I was like, you know what? We do so many, like, Belgian-style ales and, like, IPAs. Like, I'm going to go over to, like, just a completely different aisle. So I stumbled upon the Asian aisle, and I'm like, 
Um, let me look at like, you know, Japanese beers. I was just like, oh, sweet potato. This looks good. I just rummaged through all the bottles, t- could not find it. And then I found this one from the same brewery, the Shikoku. And um, it's a black lager. It, uh, it says it is on the back. It's got a jet black color of onyx, which is true. It's very dark. Um, just like yours, Drew, I poured mine out and there was no head, even though it okay, says maybe on the, it's just the, the brewery, yeah. maybe, um, it says on the back of the bottle though, that it has a brightness. Okay. So enigmatic shadows contrast sharply with the brightness of its tea colored head. I did not get any head on this, so I don't know what you're talking about. Um, maybe it got like bashed around in the shipping process from japan or something i don't know i don't know i the only thing i can assume is that they like the way you pour beer in japan is like you just pour it straight like mm-hmm. maybe they have it done in ser- like they brew it in such a way that it will give you the right amount of head if you just pour it straight i you poured it like a normal out. beer because i was like oh yeah this i forgot it was a japanese beer yeah um so maybe that's part of the reason but uh, it says it's got a profile of espresso and dark fruits. So let me take a take a sip. Do the Japanese love fucking plum? So I bet it's going to taste like plum. Well, I mean, I looked at dark fruit and I was just thinking it's probably plum. Plum yeah. or cherries? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Is it plummy? Plum. I can taste espresso and then what seems to be plum. Um, you know, like kind of tart, bitter, but, mm. uh, fruity. Um, Plums are it's, good. it's good though. I like it. It's kind of, it kind of gives you like the illusion of, of black licorice, like natural black licorice, mm. but it's not. So it's not like, you know, like sugary, super sweet black licorice like Jaeger is, but like, it's got like the, it's got like you know, slightly bitter. Um, the coffee element is very prevalent in this. And then, you know, like a little hint of fruit. So like, uh, it's, mm. it's got a good flavor palette. I like it. Is it strong as well? Like, uh, the Beniaka? 5%. So it's like a normal 5%. Beer. Oh, so it's not too bad. That one's these, much more. These red ales are always, always higher in alcohol for whatever. Yeah, reason. I'm disappointed. <clears throat> I want, I think like I've been drinking it um, since you've been talking stuff like that. If this beer had like good carbonation and good head, like this would be like tops for me. This would be like really fucking good. Like it's it's getting pulled down because it it has like a like not a stale taste, but like an oldie style beer that's been sitting around for a while kind of taste. I don't know if yours tastes like that, Rolando, but for me, like this beer would be elevated if it was like fully carbonated. Um, maybe I buy another one and don't hit a guy. Some carbonation. <laughs> I didn't hit it. I, I just poured the rest of the bottle into the glass and then just poured it straight. Mm. And I got a little bit of head, but it dissipated almost instantly. So like, mm-hmm. it's definitely, mm-hmm. I'm assuming like these beers just don't have a lot of head retention. Mm-hmm. Could be, could just be that's how they brewed it. Not to have that or whatever they did, you know? I don't think it's how they brewed it because that's like they say it has a fucking like tea colored head. Like I well, I, it's it was probably tea the shipping, colored. The shipping process. <laughs> it was tea colored until until it was gone until, forever. Well, it's <laughs> gone now. It lasted about ten seconds. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And that's not well, that's not stereotypical of like Japanese beer because if you have like a Sapporo or a Kirin or like anything like that, it has like a good head retention, good things like that. So I don't know if it's just those are very uh, bottles, better, very very or... malty beers though. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's but, true. Yeah. I don't know. Who knows? Um, yeah, I'll jump into mine. I'm pretty sure we've all had this. Have you? You both have had this here in Nevada celebration before. No. I haven't had the celebration. Oh. I've had the. Oh. Um, Oh, is it? I've had like the regular Sierra Nevada, just like yeah. the IPA, or is that the same thing? This one's different. I've only it's, had. Um, I think I have different. Yeah, it's like not the green, as the green um, label. Mm-hmm. It's not as bitter as that one. The in the times I've had it, because I actually like this IPA, because um, every year my dad always gets it, and I'll like have a couple, and it's actually pretty good. Um, so like I said, well, it's an Sierra, IPA. Uh, 
Sierra Nevada in general is like a really mellow IPA. It's like I I say that's like a beginner IPA that I suggest to people to try because it it's not ever like crazy overwhelming. But that's just that's <clears throat> I don't just like me, their so. green one all that much. But yeah, it, compared to like the double that we had earlier in the season, um, it is definitely Whoa. more mild. But <laughs> is Sierra Nevada an IPA? I thought it was just a pale ale. Which one? It's an the IPA. Regular? Green one, yeah. The green. I yeah, a, I'm pretty sure it's an IPA. IPA. I'd have to go look. But some of their I've had some of their other stuff and it was too bitter for me, but I really like this celebration IPA. I didn't think I would because it's an IPA. Um I thought it'd be too bitter for me, but um the times I've had it, it's it's pretty good. Um so as the name suggests, it's kinda it's a winter beer. It come they brew it every winter, so that's why on the front you've got a log cabin covered in snow. And um for me I poured it out. It pours that typical IPA color, you know, like that uh, light brown. You kind of Newcastle, but darker than that. Like uh, mm-hmm. it's your typical IPA. The head stays for a little while, but then it kind of dissipates. It also could be that be- this beer is old, um, the, <laughs> that it's just not going to stay as long as it would uh, normally. And I don't remember what it was like the last time I poured one straight, um, but it is still pretty carbonated. Um, the smell of it is, you know citrusy with uh you can smell citrus hops and, and and malt i guess you would say they say it's layered pine and citrus hop aromas um i don't really smell pine but my nose is a little stuffy today but um flavor wise let me take a sip yeah it's definitely citrusy you get a lot of citrus um and I guess in the flavor, you kind of get pine, not like eating a pine tree, but you know what you, <laughs> what you would expect when you think of like maybe tasting pine. Um, and then the bitter kind of comes in after all of this, but it's really mellow. It just kind of coats your tongue with bitter, stays there for a little bit, and then it really starts to dissipate right after. Um, pretty carbonated um, and malty. It's pretty and it's pretty malty. Um, all right. And other than that, it's pretty simple in a nutshell. So. Um, how about from there, um, Whoa. we move on and we, we go, what? One, one second. I did look up, oh. um, the Sierra Nevada stuff. So are you guys talking oh, about uh-huh. the light green bottle that is found everywhere? Or are you talking about the darker green one? Because me. Link it to me. because the light green one is a, is an American pale. And then the dark green is an IP extra IPA. Link lonk me, bro. Me I'm looking on my phone. Um, well, let me look. Where's Sierra. the, which one is the, the one that's the double or whatever? There's the Torpedo Extra IPA, and then there's the Pale Ale, which is just an American Pale. Oh, maybe, I'll, I think I'm uh, looking maybe. at the, the Pale Ale one. Maybe that's why I recommend it as an IPA, because it is a Pale Ale, and yeah. it's not fucking bitter as it's, shit. It's half, <laughs> it's half the, it's half the bitterness yeah. of a, a normal, of like the other IPAs yeah. they have. Honestly, I don't know. I've had both. Which one I've had? I, I'm pretty sure I've had both. Um, but I, they look really similar. One's got a river and one's got like plants, but like they're both green and one's just darker. I don't remember which no, the, one. Uh, um, the one I'm talking, I'm talking about is about. definitely the uh, the, the pale ale. The pale ale. Yeah. Oh, okay. Definitely drink yeah, that so. if you want to get into more bitter beers, but don't. Yeah, that's that's a good transition. Don't drink transition. the torpedo. Don't drink the torpedo if you have <laughs> never had an IPA. And don't drink yeah. the mission double fucking IPA that we had. Only drink that if you're me and you like pain and bitter. <laughs> I like, that like having your I think balls. It's not up. bad. <laughs> it's just bad for me because I because I don't like I don't like bitter beer. But all right, let, let's go on. You know, let's uh, give our reviews here. So I'm gonna go back to you, Drew. What what do you rate? The uh, Coedo Beniaca. Like I said, if it had more carbonation and more head retention and anything like that, it would be like a 4.75. It would be like really fucking up there for me. Be- it, maybe it's the process. Maybe this is how it's intended. I, I don't know, but it kind of tastes stale to me. Uh, it's going to get a lot lower. Um, I'm going to give it a, a 3.5 because of that. 
but I'm going to I'm going to try it again. I'm going to not get fucking cut off by some asshole and have the beer fly through my car and maybe that's <laughs> Out the why front windshield and explode <laughs> on the pavement. Like, Maybe maybe that's why it wasn't like as uh, foamy or you know had carbonation or whatever. Uh, but yeah, three point five for me. If it had all those things, it would be a lot higher because the flavor is actually excellent. It's it's super good. So we'll look back to you then in in another episode and see if you've had it. Yeah, next time I go to Bedmo, them. I'm gonna buy another one and check it out. I wonder if it's the type of glass to what kind of glass did you pour it in. One of those English like ale, the ones that goes up and then out and then back and up. That's exactly the kind of glass I poured mine into. I was one. I'm wondering like, I mean, it's a, is there a specific ale, type they so. like to pour? Because every time I, I I know I'm in America, but every time I go to like a sushi restaurant, they always give you those small little glasses. You know, mm-hmm. I, maybe it's intended to pour into a straight glass like that. Maybe this is more of like a craft, this is more <laughs> like a craft style beer. I know like the ones that you go and you have at uh, a Japanese restaurant or like Sapporo or whatever, where it's like more of a like Bud Light sort of style yeah. beer. I mean, they're they're a little better quality than that, but it's like that Generally, kind of yes. s- style. So I, th- you know, you have those in your little glass. You have your sake. This is meant to be drank. You know, as a beer, like by itself. Yeah, so. I'm just not. And it's, sure, and it's like, a red. What kind of glass? Well, it's a red ale too. So I think I think it's supposed to go in this type of glass. But I could be, you know, talking out my ass. You know, who well, I mean, these glasses are all purpose. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We're just gonna have to go to Japan and find out. We'll we'll ask them what do you pour this in. <laughs> That's just what we're gonna. I'm, have to I'm, do. Gonna, I'm gonna get it again. I'm gonna get it again because I I really want this to be good because it it, it is like the flavor is so good. It's just like stale and it's, it makes me really sad. <laughs> yeah, I would definitely try it again. Maybe it lost too much of the fizz in your yeah. escapades running people over. I'm th- I'm thinking maybe no though because you know we'll move on to Rolando's but you know Rolando you said the th- same thing and it's like and I yeah. I poured the rest of mine in it and I fucking you know poured it with integrity or whatever you want to say and dumped that <laughs> with shit with purpose and poured and, it with and, purpose and, and, and and nothing so you know who who knows all right well we'll look for you to have it again in the future uh, Rolando what do you think what's your rating for the Koedo Shikoku um well. It's a it's a black lager. The only other um, black lager I've ever had is Zinku, Brazilian beer. That's a good beer. Um, this one is good. It's got a nice flavor profile. I'm kind of with Drew with like I'm disappointed that there was no head at all. But I'm trying to remember. It's been a while since I've had Zinku. I don't even know if that has head either. It may just be this type of beer. Um, that doesn't have a, you know, a lot of head retention, but it's good. It's very drinkable. Um, I would definitely get it again. So I'm gonna go with the four point two five. Okay, cool. Um, mine. You you guys know going into this, I don't like IPAs. Um, but oh. as IPAs go. I have to say this is one of my favorites because I drink this consistently whenever it's in my house. I don't actively buy it, <laughs> but I'll drink it if it's there. Um, whereas like some of the other things that that if they're there, I don't I don't drink. Um, and so this one being it's relatively mild. The carbonation is good. The way it feels, it's a, a pretty decent six point eight percent. So like you get a good feel from it. Um and it's definitely good for the winter because it makes you warm. But uh, I'm probably going to give it a 3.75 to possibly a 4. Just because I probably would buy it again in the future. I just don't. Because <laughs> usually when I go to the store, I'll be like, hmm, maybe I'll get that. And then I see something else, generally a stout. And I'm like, no, I'm going to get this instead. And then I don't end up buying it. But uh, yeah, we'll go with we'll go with a 3.75 and... And I'll be generous about it, <laughs> I guess. Cool. Um, so, all right, let's let's move on then to our our first uh, our first uh, segment, the weekly pairing. Oh, well, anime pairing. Uh, we've got one show left to talk about for this season, and it's Soccer Request uh, episode. Is it thirteen? Uh, or 12. Uh, I believe so. I believe it's 13. Uh, 13. Anyway, so when we last checked in with the girls and the town, they were 
ready to go with the band coming in and all the the merchants and stuff kind of like raring to go and giving money and being like, yeah, let's go get behind them and do shit. And uh, everyone was kind of banding together. In this episode, we kind of saw the the band come in and they seemed kind of about where they were. The fans were kind of about where they were and they were just like, well, we're here for the band. And we saw by the end of the episode that uh, they'd thrown away a lot of the coupons, you know, which personally I think is kind of fucked up because who throws away free money? I'm just going to say. But um, <laughs> <laughs> we saw them like chuck all that stuff away and then the studio kind of had their way with the filming to make it look a certain way. Uh, they so I'm they gonna heavily throw- edited the footage <laughs> heavily edited yes i was going to i was going to ask you guys like what did you guys think about the the producer guy not the the dick one but the uh, one who's from the town Amami, yeah. uh, by the end of the yeah yeah by the end of the episode when they were kind of showing him cuz my respect for him personally went up a little bit did you guys like him or dislike him by the end of the episode uh, yeah i mean i i always thought that he what like he wanted the best interests for Monoyama and like by the end I had a feeling because there's a lot of stuff that was left out from footage that they took that maybe he's gonna do something that will like me like like a producer's cut or whatever like where they <laughs> show like the actual stuff that happened because it does it seems like they kind of make it look like he he's dissatisfied and wants to do something so yeah. I, I have respect for him I was thinking maybe he'll leave and like go join the girls or something like that. I don't know. Maybe. But I don't know if that'll actually happen. <laughs> that would be cool. I would actually like that to happen. But um, and uh, they they kind of shat on the recordings that they did. They made it look like what was it? They made it look like the girls invited the band, right? Mm-hmm. And then uh, and then that they just kept showing pictures about how this town sucked. And they're like, and they're working really hard. Look at them invite this band. And then I'm pretty sure at one point they like edited over what the band people said. And, yeah, and they did. Made, yeah, they <laughs> they were like talking and he was like, we're so glad to be here. And it was like somebody else's voice. It was, it was the was narrator. Like, yeah, the narrator, the narrator. Just, <laughs> just kind of put the words in the guy's mouth. <laughs> yeah, and I'm like, this is <laughs> fucked up. But um, Drew, what'd you, what did you think about this episode? Did you dislike it? Or because I know last episode you disliked how they were handling um, shoot pink haired girls Yoshino. crisis again Yoshino's second crisis. Did you think think this was a nice change from kind of going from the whole crisis after crisis after crisis? So this was like disclaimer. I watched this when I was like really drunk because it's Fourth <laughs> of July and I've been drinking like all day. But uh, regardless, this was like a super feel good episode for me for most of it. I was like watching this. I'm like, yeah, everything's going right. Everything's like super awesome. You know, everyone's <laughs> succeeding. The town's, you know, super happy. All the people are like, yeah, this is awesome. We're selling all this food. Everybody's helping out in a good, uh, constructive way. And then we start running into some problems. The uh, The band can't figure out how to do technical things because... They can't. Because apparently yeah, they're stupid. Knows. Apparently. Uh, yeah. I don't know. It's like, like we're a super popular how, band, you, but it, we can't. You saw how they perform. They're like retarded. <laughs> it, it's it, it's probably some sort of like weird like technical issue with like they probably had like a really poor poor um they probably had very poor um sound reinforcement team. And lighting. Yeah. So, like, there's probably, like, yeah. oh, we can't get this light to turn on. And, like, oh, these speakers aren't working. <laughs> mm-hmm. like, it, Did you turn it off yeah. and turn it back on again? Did you unplug it? <laughs> I Like, it it shit, yeah. shit so, like that happens all the time. Yeah. So, you know, real, real stupid shit. And then, like, you know, the... And that starts ruining the trivia. And then nobody's using the coupons, as uh, noted by all the garbage. And then all culminates with Yoshino, you know, continuing with what I said last week. is She's having her crisis, and she gets on the bus and be like, I'm sad, I'm going home. Like, I feel like that's a cop-out. Like, you know, we all know you're going to come back, and you're going to, you know, try to promote this town and stuff like that. But it's just like... You know, have have some like constructive criticism or something of like what you do. Like, sure, 
it sucked. Like the final cut of the TV show was not good. But at the end of the day, you're getting promotion for the town. And that's like what the, the old man says. Excuse me. That's what the old man says, too. He's like, regardless of what happens, you know, this is going to be positive for the town. Um, I think the like the one criticism was like, you know, it just looks like a generic mountain town or, you know, whatever. But the name is out there. They're on TV. Like, you know, can you be happy for something or just be like, I've been wasting my past six months of my life. What am I doing? It's like you were going to be in Tokyo doing nothing regardless. <laughs> so why are you yeah. getting so butthurt about yeah. about this? Like, it, regardless, like the, you're you're having a positive influence on this town. Whereas if you're in Tokyo, like even if you got a job within the past six months or whatever, you're going to be an entry level position. You're not going to be doing shit. So appreciate where you are, appreciate, you know, your role in this town and appreciate that you've been able to, you know, at least revitalize this town a little bit because before you got here, it was shit. And, you know, we we went through all the, yeah, we went through all (laughs) these different, you know, all these different, you know, trials and tribulations of the girls and stuff and everybody has come out better, um, at uh you know at the turn of it even the grandma and, and <laughs> yeah exactly you know she, she she was even happy this episode yeah. <laughs> this is segue but the best shot was like her and like the garbage in the background I'm like yeah she's garbage <laughs> <laughs> but uh but i don't know uh, if that's anyway, what they like, intended but yeah <laughs> they, it wasn't what they intended but that's yeah. what i thought <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm i'm thinking back to our uh our episodes of Aramanga sensei um uh, and trash but anyway <laughs> um but o- so. overall like be happy with what you've done you've had a positive influence on this place don't have this existential crisis of you being a whiny bitch because you're a whiny bitch like you wouldn't have done <laughs> anything better in tokyo you like accept what you're doing and you know claim responsibility yeah you know you can't control what people edited on tv but rolando can attest to this all of tv is fucking fake regardless of it's live like or not like there's gonna be influences by the director and things like that now did our director totally agree with the route that they went i don't think so we see you know at one of the ending scenes the host goes like you know it, it's better this way like you know accept it and i think he's gonna come back with a vengeance and like try to revitalize this town in some way because i think he does have respect and does like this town that he's from but at the end of the day accept what happened like you can't just run away from your problems constantly if everyone ran away from their problems like where would anyone in society be so man up you know or you know balls up or breasts up i don't know <laughs> what the women the women equivalent of it is but you know the, except the what equi- you're doing female equivalent of <laughs> of, of nutting up <laughs> whatever like, that do may that be. <laughs> do do that and, and accept your role and you know live with your decisions because at the end of the day and i think i don't know if you guys agree with this or not but like what would you have been doing in tokyo anyway you know what i mean she would have been searching for jobs still <laughs> yeah or something yeah. Yeah. or be back uh, in her other in her actual mountain home yeah mm-hmm. back home with her parents doing nothing mm-hmm. i saw it kind of this the same way um but i was thinking that when I was thinking about what's going to happen, because we all know she's going to come back if she is leaving, you know, if she's going to come back. I saw it happening in a couple ways. One way she gets to the station and there's like someone there and she has some sort of conversation and then she's like, you know what? You're right. And then she turns around and she comes back with a vengeance. Um, either that or she like goes home and she like wanders around moping about how she's normal and what she's doing isn't doing anything because they edited her edited the thing that she wanted to go well or some crap like that. And then she goes, you know what? Screw this. And then she comes back with a vengeance as, as you know, same as the first one, either that, or she goes back home with the intent to like talk to the director dude and be like, what did you do? And then he's like, that wasn't my idea. Let's make a difference. And then she comes back with a vengeance <laughs> and they change the town. Is That's kind of how I saw it going. Is there a situation what? where she doesn't come back with a vengeance? No. There's okay. not a situation where she comes back without a vengeance. We have at She's least always like got a eleven or twelve, <laughs> eleven or twelve more episodes for her to come back in a vengeance. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, no, I totally. Don't worry. She's coming back with a vengeance. <laughs> I agree with you on the on the on the sec of the two and three options two and three, because those are actually what I was thinking would happen. Her like leaving and then coming back after moping or talking to the dude, or or she's actually going, or it's like you know, uh. They're throwing us off, like, you know, with the dragon statue shit. 
and like showing the guy's face in the swamp. Yeah, like it's actually <laughs> yeah. just you know like she's they're trying to make us think it's all like dramatic and shit, but she's actually going to talk to the 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 TV producer. So I also had the idea that maybe they're trying to throw us way off, and she's not actually going to leave the city at all. She's just she had a suitcase out while doing stuff and she's just bringing it back to her house like on the other side of town well no she <laughs> did say she's going really to the fun. station she she said she, she said she's like i'm station. going to the station yeah. yeah yeah but maybe she's just gotta like deliver something and then she's gonna go back to her house <laughs> and they're just no i i just thought that would be no. really hilarious if they threw that as a curveball no. that would and i would be like you have my respect show this i would actually lose great. this i would lose respect Really? I yeah. would laugh so hard. I'd be like, this is great, dude. The long con. The weak long con, dude. That's the way to do it. <laughs> For me, that's just a cheap a cheap laugh. <laughs> dude, it would be hilarious. I'd be like, this is great. All these people think it's so serious, and then it's not. Uh, anyways, <laughs> um, so you know, definitely uh, definitely, kind of all think that she, if she does leave, she's kind of copping out a bit. If, she, if it's option number two, she's copping out. If she's like going to mope, then I'm gonna be annoyed with her. Yeah. But if she if it's number three and she's going to talk to the guy, then I'll be like, all right, well at least she's trying to do something. She's like everything we just worked for up to the six months, and then we had this show and it was supposed to be like really good, and then all of a sudden they kind of like shit on it. I'm gonna go talk to that motherfucker and see what the fuck is going on. Um, even though she'll talk that to the wrong nice. guy, it would be. I hope that's what happens. Um, I think that would be a good like progression for her character but i'm i'm thinking it's more likely that she's gonna mope for a bit and then do something like that and then come back guess what with a vengeance <laughs> are you sure so i don't think she i don't think she's invested enough into the town to do that because it's like she's constantly bitching about everything it's like i can't do this or like i need to get better at that i i don't know it's self-improvement just... man you know that's all she's no. she's trying to do. She also faces a lot a lot of like opposition more so than the other girls because she's an outsider and everybody like not everybody but you know the grandma hates her because she's an outsider because <laughs> like when Shiori talked to the people they were like oh well it's Shiori are you sure you can do this and they weren't like super against her whereas whenever she suggests something they're like uh you know and so it's kind of rough on her. I but. mean I mean sure she has something to prove but it's just like at the same time it's like all you do is bitch. <laughs> It's true. I don't know. I I like I like all the characters and like Yoshino has like good points, but for the most part, she's my least favorite character. <laughs> like, really? she's just like loud and annoying, and like I have to do this, I have to do that. Like, I well, I don't know if she's my least. Mm, it's tied between her and um, Maki, the actress. Uh, the yeah, one that you guys don't remember her name. I can't there's a reason she's name. boring <laughs> there's a I mean reason she's I just she, uh, she's she's just as bad like uh, she, she, my dad hates me like well <laughs> maybe you should have gotten a better career than acting like I don't know what to tell you like or well gone uh, he obviously wants you to be successful to <laughs> yeah like don't give up on the career just because you don't agree with how the acting world works like you could have been as famous as um God, her name wasn't Kawaii. It was something Moe. stupid like that, though. Moe. That Moe. Was <laughs> um, but, Kawaii. yeah, it's like you could have been su- as successful as Moe if you just would have played into the acting game. And if you're not going to do that, like, get a real job. Like, anyway. No one's as, <laughs> no one's as important as a Discount Megaman, though. Just, you know. No one's Dude, as Discount popular, Megaman. <laughs> she fucking loves Chin Chin. That's all you got to remember. I don't know why the name <laughs> popped in my head, but when when you were saying Kawaii or Moe, for some reason, I thought Discount Megaman. Now I'm just going <laughs> to call fucking Maki or uh, Moe Kawaii from now on. Oh, I think we Kawaii need to bring back. out. I think we need to bring out Desc- Discount Megaman just so we never forget, you know, that that greatness uh, that the, is the her name character. That is <laughs> Discount Megaman. <laughs> I, oh, I thought of a similar thing this weekend at anime expo but like i can talk about that later when we talk about it <laughs> i was actually just about to move into anime expo so yeah, let's let's well, get, let's out, move let's to get our out of soccer next me segment off. we'll talk about we'll go happy hour with our beers and enjoy some wonderful reminiscing about our anime expo experiences but uh rolanda what were you gonna say <laughs> oh this is just an aside but like i was going through uh like today was just like my like at Comic Con, I usually leave like the last day because like I like check the exhibit halls for all the shops that I was scouting throughout the weekend to be like, hmm, 
like which ones are gonna like put stuff for cheap um you know and like all the stuff that like i didn't think was gonna sell out like could i get for cheaper so i was looking for love live merchandise and um everything left was all like honoka and um chica and uh, i was mentioning what? to a friend no niko niko ni well i mean there was but like the majority of stuff <laughs> left and that was on the good shit. and that was on sale was honoka and chica and i was telling my friend um uh about it i was like yeah the two like the two discount idols like honoka and chica because <laughs> <laughs> i just remembered the fucking discount megamin <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, those are the discount idols. It's uh, number one, Kotori. Nico. Number no, two, Maki. no, not not Nico. Number two is Maki. <laughs> um, Maki's number one. Number three is Umi, and the rest are you know whatever it happens to be. Speaking Maki. of your, your love tomato, life. your your to, your tomato princess is good, but she's not great. Yeah, she's the best. Her ketchup, Speak. ketchup tomato princess. Speaking of Love Live and Anime Expo, on the day I actually got in, we'll we'll go back to the day I didn't get in in just a second. Um, I was waiting at the stairs to go like to go up the stairs before they opened the door, and uh, there was a bunch of Love Live people, and I see them in front of me, and then out of nowhere from behind me, I just hear a really bad impression of Nico Nico Ni, and I'm like, oh my god, that's like the worst I have ever heard. But anyways, it kind of triggered me. But <laughs> wait, you got anyway. in? When did you? When did you go back? I went, you went yesterday. Uh, yesterday. Oh, I, I didn't said even fuck know. it and I'm going. And I went yesterday. <laughs> um, Wait, they gave you a badge for one day, even no, though you paid No, for I'm going to refund my other badge. I, I bought another you badge. You can't and refund I'm your refund. other badge. They're not no, going to refund you. People have gotten refunds. I told people Alec to just refunds. get his, his badge like um, transferred to the day, but he bought another they badge. Don't do yeah. They don't. I bought it the day before because I didn't want to risk getting there them not transferring it and then having to pay eighty dollars at the door rather than sixty online so oh, i just fair. was like i'm just gonna buy one um but anyway so we'll go Woo! to so the first day that Fireworks. we all three went um rolando drew and i were there at what we got there at 10 30 was it yeah, no it was 11 like no 11 11 30 11 11 30 11 we'll say 11 15 there we go we got there at around 11 15 on the first day which was saturday, saturday correct saturday. that was day zero or whatever not the pre day, day. oh day one okay yeah. we we're there on day one and if anybody else who listens to us was there on day one you know how much of a shit show it was bad that it was it was a bad we got there at 11 15 we stood in line for three hours roughly three three and a half hours like three hours yeah three hours yeah. and we, we still were like three hours away from being let in, if even to no, not get even our not badges. even let in, just get to the get badges. our badges. <laughs> yeah, and then we had another line to get into the place. I don't understand yeah. how it can be that bad. Like they they said last year they had a hundred thousand people. Comic Con had last year had a hundred and thirty five thousand people. So 35,000 more people, and I saw nothing on the news about extremely long lines. I, I think at the most, you wait like an hour to pick up your badge. Well, yeah, we, we talked about this throughout the entire time that we were in line with there, which was a total fucking shit show. And I've, hot. I, I've <laughs> said it. We've all said it. I've been to multiple cons with more people at it, and the most that I've ever spent in line for a badge is 30 minutes. 30 minutes to an hour. That's the longest I've ever spent in line. And and I'm going to things that are more intense than Anime Expo. I've been to Dragon Con. I've been to Comic Con San Diego. I've been to PAX, uh, both West and Central. I've been to all these things. I've never spent more than 30 minutes to an hour in line. And that's what pissed me off so bad about this. But it was it was a total shit show. Like, unbelievable. There was no organization. I think, how many volunteers do you think we saw at all on that five. Saturday day one? We saw yeah. maybe four, five, five, five. max. There was a point, there was a point where we went past the front where people were <laughs> just running to like try to stay in line because there was no organization. And people were just And then you get like, cut by like eight people. Yeah. People just cut yeah. in. And, and that wasn't, and that wasn't even halfway through the line. That was maybe nope, the, first the first quarter, quarter of the yeah. line. That was after, what I think that was after is, an hour and a half of standing in line. I that think happened. they moved we the like, line. The fuck. Because later yeah, that definitely. day I looked at, or well, the next day I was looking and it was like, 
the everyone who showed the map of the lines showed it starting somewhere else than from where we started. So where we yeah. started, I think we walked through all that, and then they were like, actually, let's move the line way over here. Which yeah, they t- where we stood for the first hour and a half wasn't actually the line. That was just like people lining up for nothing. It was people lining yeah, up. I think to that's get what into the line. Yeah, yeah, it was the line for the line. It, it, and it wasn't actually anything. And then like nope. we actually got into the line, and it was like an hour after that. I'm like, guys, I. I can't stand out here anymore. <laughs> like yeah, this is retarded. Up. Like this is it this is. No sense. It was honestly the the worst experience I've ever had at a con. Uh, like I said before, um, and Rolanda, you texted me like the next day that you went, and you said how they remedied the situation. Yeah. Can you in uh, enlighten all of our uh, listeners how they uh, remedied the situation? Yeah. So like you heard from Drew, our experience with like actually just waiting to pick up badges like this was the line to pick up badges this was not the line to go buy a badge this was the line to pick up your pre-purchased badge okay so if that line lasted like fucking six hours and like mind you the exhibit hall that has every all the stuff you want to buy closes at 6 p.m on Mm -hmm. all the days except like today which was three o'clock um you're not gonna get to go in there like nope and do anything you're gonna you can like maybe go to like watch some anime like in one of the screening rooms but like you're not gonna do anything it sucks if you have a one day pass like drew and alec did um yep. <laughs> but there was that and then apparently on twitter people were talking about how afterwards the line to get into the con was three hours long or some shit like that if you had a badge <laughs> so um saturday I went back to pick up my badge. I w- went there super early. I got there, I think, 7... Sunday, Sunday. Oh, yeah, Sunday. Sunday. Um, I got there at, like, 7.15 in the morning. Um, met up with a couple other people. Um, and we waited in line for about... So we waited in line until 7.45-ish when they started... So like, like, they actually minutes. started just letting people in um, to pick up their badges. Um, so, like, it took maybe the only waiting was actually waiting for them to let us in so like as soon as like they started letting people in it was like super smooth they had way more people um scanning your your qr codes and like checking your id so like it was pretty pretty smooth getting your picking up your badge not to mention these badges they're not personalized they don't have your names on them they're just badges <laughs> that they scan That's the best and part. That's the best so, part. Yeah, another another thing to mention. I've been uh, to places with personalized badges, such as Dragon Con, that has your fucking name on the badge. And every time I've been to Dragon Con, which is in Atlanta, um, usually in September um, around Memorial Day, um, it took me five minutes to get my badge at Dragon Con on the most on the the busiest day. So. I don't know what the fuck they were doing. I have like, no idea. They like, don't know what the fuck they were doing. I don't there know was zero organization. what they were doing. It's <clears throat> obviously like completely unorganized on like what like Saturday, apparently Friday, um, day zero, like the preview night. People waited in line for like three hours to pick, to pick up their badges. Yeah. Um, it was like if they didn't see an issue with that, like on day zero, like that they needed to have more staff for day one which is probably going to be the busiest day. Um, Like, I just don't, I just don't even understand like how they can, how they can even think of like expanding it even further. Like clearly they sold too many, they sold, they oversold their badges and then they understaffed. So like those two issues like are the big reason. Yeah. I, I don't mind overselling. Like I get that you have to make money, different things like that to reserve the venue, different things. But we saw fucking five people on the busiest day, yeah. and Volunteers. and they were just standing there. They weren't even like giving direction. People they were couldn't just even like get into the like, car. They were just saying, "Keep the get, line get, moving." Get, it's like, get, get the line moving. We're doing? People with really, bags, you like, think we want to stop here? Like, <laughs> are you kidding yeah. me? Oh, my it God. was. But, it was the most disorganized worst thing that i've i've i think i've ever seen in a con it was terrible it got it got better the next day because like they actually staffed more people like more security so like the event operations company they hired they actually had more of them so that they can more open more than three doors to the convention center and let people in instead of having them line up for three hours so yeah 
Like the and way they the, the way they awful. they put a statement out saying like, oh, there's way more cosplayers this year, so we needed extra security, like extra thorough bag checks. That's also that's, that's also total out. bullshit because every every um, weapons check station that I saw, and if you've never been to a con or anything like that, they need to check the weapons, make sure they are not dangerous, things like that. Every weapons check station that I saw was empty. Yeah. So that's total bullshit. Yeah. Yeah. It was actual. Just there was like no one bullshit. at it. It was bag check yeah. that was holding everything up because they mm-hmm. only had like three doors open. Yep. They yeah. had way more bad. doors open on Sunday, um, Monday, and today. Like it was yep. not an issue getting in in and out of the con. And then the lines, they didn't have any sort of ropes. They had tape on the ground that no one was following. <laughs> they didn't have any sort of ropes. No signage saying this is the line you need to be in. It was all oh, guys, purely you, word of uh, mouth. Hey, where's the line? Hey, Alec, you oh, know what? Uh, resol- you know what resolves that? What people and a sign? <laughs> yeah, that's all they <laughs> needed. They just needed somebody. Uh, they needed a sign on the ground that said "Line for badge pickup starts here." And then if it goes beyond that point, you have somebody like standing farther down the way, going, "Come here with for the megaphone." Badge yeah. You literally Come need here, one person. Here. You have the yeah. line going, and then that person keeps moving every time the line gets longer. And they just go, the line starts here. Everyone sees this long line. They follow that, the line till they see the megaphone person. They go, I'm going to get in line right here. And that's it. That's all they got to do. Like, yeah, ugh. that wasn't even the, the only, line. Went, that wasn't even the only line issue like at the con. Like, I don't know if you if you were at the was it the Anaplex booth. So they were having a. Uh, um. They were having a gotcha for Fate Grand Order, which I guess is now um, translated into English for Mm -hmm. um, everywhere else that's not Japan that's had it forever. And um, they were doing a gotcha where it's like you line up, you like, quote unquote, summon uh, a hero and then you get like a corresponding like free giveaway thing. And -hmm. people really wanted to do it. But the way they handled this was they're like, oh, we can't they like we can't have this huge line around the booth. So they capped the line at like a certain amount and then we're telling people, oh, the line's capped, come back in 10, walk around and come back in 10 to 15 minutes. And then every time you have to do it, you come back and then there's some other Joe Schmo who fucking walked up in front of you and they get led into the line. And then you like you walk, you it's this whole song and dance for like you do this four or five times before you're just like, fuck this. I don't want to do this anymore. And then (laughs) not only are they doing that. But like when you like try and like be like, hey, like like I've come back a few times and then like the people working the booth are kind of like in like they're they're kind like I can tell like, yeah, maybe they're irritated because people keep like trying to ask about it. But like, well, they're they don't assholes care. To you. I mean, they're it's like what the they, like, they don't care. What the fuck? Like, why are you doing this if like you're just going to be an asshole to all the people you're trying that that you're supposed to be serving? It's like. Why even bother? Like, clearly, you have nothing better to do than act like you're fucking better than everyone else. Like, Jesus. Like, these are people that are just trying to line up for something that they're clearly frustrated about because of the way, like, they're handling these line issues. And it's just... uh, The one thing I do have to say is the people handling the line were, like, they don't have any reason. It's not justified for them to be assholes. But there were probably more cases of people being assholes to them than them being assholes to people. Cause I, I bet you there were a lot of people like, this is bullshit. Like, yeah, just let me in the line. And I just said that dicks to those, like people. I mentioned, I mentioned that I was like, yeah, I'm sure like they've been dealing with this like the whole time. But like, you know, if you're, if you're taking a job like that, it's also their job, it's, it's your job <laughs> to sure. not like, to not let that get to you. You know, like I'm sure like, are they paid or volunteered? I'm pretty sure, Volunteers. like, they're employees for Anaplex. Mm-hmm. Be- because, Probably. like, that's what I'm just assuming. Like, <clears throat> you, like, you get, you're invited by your job to, like, you know, go to the con and work it. Like, I'm sure, like, we've all, like, I've been in, like, a similar situation. But, like, I, I haven't, like, lost my composure in a situation where, like, I would, like, you know, like, snap back at, it. um... At someone that like I'm supposed to, you know, like be like taken care of, quote unquote. So, oh, sorry. Um, 
I don't know. Like that just kind of got to me because it's just like you're working a customer service job and you're bad at customer service, you know? It, so Anaplex has bad customer service people. No. <laughs> like, they're Anime Expo booth line people. Like not all yeah. of them, but like, you know, the ones that I happen Lines to in run general into. Struggle the one, in anime the, the people that were working it today were nicer. Issue. But like there were less people today too. Yeah. The people on Sunday, like, God, like come on. Like, don't be such dicks to the people. Like, I understand there are people trying to, you know, like sneak in, which is like a stupid thing to try and do. Like they're clearly standing right there, but like <laughs> to the people just like asking you a question, like don't be so rude to them. It it's like your job to do this. <laughs> like, yeah. I'm sorry, but like that's not that's not acceptable. It's true. Um, there were there were a lot of issues, but how about you know we went a couple days and we actually got in. So what were some of the cool positives I would say that we that we had or saw at Anime Expo? I know one for me was um all the cool cosplay that was there and then i did enjoy yes, there was a good the cosplay. gigantic dragon from dragon ball z that was over that booth oh yeah the shenron that was really cool mm-hmm. yeah the yeah. shenron over the booth that was really that was cool. cool but um other than that like the con itself once you got in and if you weren't waiting in a line and you were just kind of walking around it felt like you know any normal con to me yeah. um i enjoyed it walking around checking out the booths i did like like the picture you and a, some of our friends sent me the day i wasn't there of the sign that says no sitting and around that oh, sign is a bunch of yeah. sitting people and it's just like we, we did the same it's thing. like no sitting this is a hazard and everyone's sitting there like no one gives a shit we I also like <laughs> that there was a booth where it's like 18 plus only and it's all these blackout curtains around this room and they're yeah. like 18 plus material in here and you're like, oh, that's so where that's the where they keep the, the hentai and the hentai. et cetera. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and so there was also that, the exhib- um, not to hijack, but there was also a big, huge booth. I don't know if you saw it yesterday because I didn't Which go one? with you yesterday until later. There was a huge booth next to the Love Live booth. Um that was just selling a shit ton of Dakimakuras. And um, I was a little disappointed because, like, as a joke, I was going to go there and buy Drew a Sigiri body pillow cover, and it wasn't there today. <laughs> <laughs> Drew Don't buy me it. fucking garbage, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> dude, you would have loved it, dude. Dude, you would have totally loved it. I, I would have slept with her. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be real. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, body pillows are comfortable as fuck. <laughs> yeah, dude. Um... Yeah, it was it was a fun time. The L, I have to say, once you're inside, the LA Convention Center is it's a nice place. It's huge, so I, I don't understand. I wouldn't know about that because I didn't get inside next year. Yeah, next year. Drew. <laughs> I'm next not going year, next year. Next year, we're 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 not gonna get one day badges, and we're gonna yeah, we're just gonna like not go the first day. Yeah, <laughs> if, done, like, if, me if, if, if we go next day. year, I'm I'm gonna get a four day. I'm gonna take like the week off and <laughs> and not go the oh, first day, and just not go Saturday. Yeah, like, we'll go <laughs> Sunday. Wait thirty minutes, get our badge, and then go in. No, just um, go mm-hmm. like pick up your badges on day negative one or day zero, and then just go. Goodness wait in your four hour line to get into the convention center because they haven't learned their lesson. Oh, <laughs> oh. I'd rather not <laughs> wait um, four hours. But if you, if you guys want more information of what the shit show that, um, the line was, check out the Kotaku article about it. They, mm-hmm. they pretty much cover, you know, or like a what, hashtag what line happened. con on Twitter because yep. that's yeah, where that was, was that was good. We were, we were looking, we were looking that up in, in line and yep, it's like somebody line. got there at like seven thirty and was mm-hmm. still in line at like four in the afternoon. Like there's some, yeah, they got their badge, but they were waiting posts. another, another fucking line to get into the convention. That's so funny. Somebody was giving pretty <laughs> funny ridiculous. posts like day seven. I don't know if I'll make it. They, they did that up to like day 12 or something like that. Yeah. That guy <laughs> was in there for so fucking long. He's like day seven. I'm starting to lose hope and all this shit. That guy was pretty funny. Apparently though, by at its maximum, the line reached like two miles long. I'm not also uh, they shout out outs, shout outs to the uh, the girls who are standing in front of us that loved oh, uh, our co host Alec here. Alec. They were uh, they were in love with her and they're in love with him. Oh, so. oh Alex, shout outs, shout outs, shout outs, Alec. Hey guys, Alexa. <laughs> it's not Alexa. I haven't it's had Alec. surgery yet. <laughs> it's Alec. It's Alec. <laughs> Uh, yeah, they were they were, uh, they were in love with him. So I shout out to it's them. It's because I They'll talked to them. To they turned they had a conversation, and I was being kind, and so I spoke back. 
But like I told both of you guys, I'm just glad that they I'm, were neither super stinky in front of us, oh, nor were yeah. they like super stuck up because like, I have been bad, in multiple con situations where someone in front of me and I'm in line and it's just B.O. And I'm like, well, here's dude, here's the uh, catchphrase for the day. No longer 11, 13 in May. You guessed it right. I'm 12, <laughs> by the way. That, we did keep <laughs> that was the that. motto that, was that kept the... us going. <laughs> Alec, you mentioned the... Uh, like the good cosplayers, um, mm-hmm. I thought that um, there were a lot of very good cosplays at at Anime Expo. A lot of people did a really good job. Yeah. Um, when we were waiting in line, I saw that banana Soraka. Mm-hmm. I do not know her name. I don't know her Instagram. I don't know anything about her, so I cannot give inf- any information or, or plug her. But she did a really good job. She just happened to be walking by, and then I'm sure she yeah, saw the she line was and was like, "I gotta go." But I was like, "That's banana Soraka." And I wish I could have been like, do you have like Instagram so I could see the other stuff she did or like grab a picture real fast because it was really good. And I put it up on our Instagram and title it random Soraka. But she hers was really good. And then I also saw on um, yesterday <clears throat> before you guys came in, somebody did an entire Reinhardt costume, literally seven feet tall. Like but wow. he apparently was something happened when he was taking the stairs and so he's like, <laughs> the way I saw the guy was the guy is, has the whole shoulder pad and like torso set up on him holding the helmet. And then behind him is this lady holding both the legs. Dang. And so you see this huge Reinhardt bodysuit and then these two human legs sticking out. And it looked hilarious, dude. It was like <laughs> these two little legs are like, dee, 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 like I don't walking. know, I don't know why people fucking do huge cosplay like that, because it's like it's not ergonomically friendly for like stairs or cons or anything and they get and, like tired. shit's gonna break like like it, why even do it if you're gonna stand you're you're gonna put in at least like 200 hours of work for something that you're gonna be in for like an hour max I don't know. i've never i've literally never seen one of those big cosplays where they're in it for longer than an hour total the, like well, i'm sure it's hot <laughs> why like put it's in just all like that it's effort their, they have like, like a like a dedication to their hobby like Honestly, I mean, I I get it, but like, do something that like people are gonna appreciate. Like you and me seeing somebody like in half a cosplay is stupid. Whereas like, oh, I see like an awesome picture on Reddit of somebody who did like a full body Reinhardt cosplay. It's like, sure, that lives on in immortality, but is it worth you know a ton of upvotes for you know two hundred hours of work and one hour max of wearing this costume? I think that's that's a waste of time. I think for, for me, I think for them it like, is. I, I think it's worth it for them yeah. as, as well. Like they probably you know planned building it for a long time, and then the actual building yeah. process was rewarding in itself. And finally getting to wear it, even if it's for an only an hour, and have all these people like go nerd gasm over see, it. They're like, I can yeah, see like building building a gun out of EVA foam or like sewing a personalized costume and something like that. That's cool. You can wear that to multiple things and do that. But it's like you spent two hundred to three hundred hours molding this armor out of EVA foam that you're like gonna wear for thirty minutes total, like. Why is that worth the effort? That's me. I mean, I, I, you know, people get kicks out of whatever they're going to get kicks out of. But at the end of the day, nobody's going to remember you for your 400 hour Reinhardt costume. Like, sorry. <laughs> I remember. I remember the Reinhardt costumes at BlizzCon. So I'll, I'll yeah, remember but BlizzCon was epic. That shit like lit up. I guess. I mean, I, I've, I saw my dragon. I saw my dragon con. I, I've seen, you know, multiple things like that. It's just like, eh. You wasted your time. Like, cool. You're not going to be able to walk around the con and enjoy the con. You're going to stand in one place for 30 minutes and then take it off. Like, cool. Whatever. I think he walked around a little, and that's why uh, they had to. They were like leaving with it to go fix it. Yeah, yeah. Of course they did because it fucking broke because it's not ergonomically friendly because no one wears armor that big unless you are like a seven ten giant and (laughs) you're you had armor you know fucking created for you by Blizzard Entertainment like. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> it's well, not realistic. <clears throat> what I got to say about Anime Doom Expo. Shout out to Doomhammer. Doomhammer is coming out soon. <laughs> what I, what I got to say about Anime Expo is the line the first day that I went awful, inexcusable. Very. Very inexcusable. I It's like I'm going to have to really think about wanting to go again next year. If I decide to go again, it will be like a miracle. The time I did spend in the con when I didn't spend four hours in line or three hours in line 
was enjoyable, but in the end, it was just another con. It was very similar to Comic-Con. It was very similar to, you know, um, it wasn't all that similar to BlizzCon, but it was similar in many ways. Um, and so, I you know, I don't know if I'll go back. I might just because um, if we're all going to go as like a group again because it was cool to hang out with people. But yeah, uh, definitely going to do it differently and not wait in the line. Um, they need to get their shit together. It, yeah. I, I definitely, because I recommended it just because, you know, like, I had gone to it, you know, like what, like six, seven years ago. And like, it's complete, it's a completely different, you know, beast now, like back when, when I went the one time I did before, it was only in, in West hall where Mm -hmm. they had like in West hall, they had like the whole thing was covered by this like entertainment hall where they had like a bunch of game demos and stuff. They had all South hall for the exhibits. And so like, they basically had all of the LA Convention Center plus um, rooms in the Marriott in LA Live. Mm-hmm. That so like they had a lot of stuff. It was basically mm-hmm. like you know a similar size to Comic Con. So they had a lot of stuff. <clears throat> it's definitely a lot bigger now, um, and that's kind of like the feeling I got. It was similar to Comic Con, although like different in vibe. But yeah, it was. I I te- like. From the what I remember of Comic Con and the one time that I went in there recently, um, by means I won't mention, um, it, it Comic Con still felt kind of more fun to me. Um, just with what was going on, I couldn't see everything. There's but, there's more at Comic Con. Um, there is a lot more at like, Comic Con. You you um, probably noticed when you because you were walking around the exhibit hall gym. yesterday, like almost every shop was like the same thing. They it's were selling the same re- stuff really at different repetitive. prices. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's like really normally repetitive. you get a lot that of plushies. That's that's but like only two or three. That's most shops. anime convention. That's most anime conventions too. They have the scalpers who go over to Japan and play crane games and try to sell crane game figures for forty. A ten dollar figure like, for forty dollars. Like, come on. <laughs> that's 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 how anime cons are. It's like if you if you find something like the only things I ever buy, and I, I don't know how it was at this con, the only th- figures I ever buy are like the like the good molded um figures like Good Smile, um who do the Nendroids. Um, they sold and things the, like that. I don't buy They fig- had a booth there and selling a lot of stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I that that was the one thing I regretted not seeing was not getting the good smile booth because I knew they were gonna be there and that's like the main company that I buy figures from. Um, get but like, I don't buy Figmas. I don't buy. They had Crane stuff that Game. sold out online. Um, mm. Yeah. I don't, I don't buy like crane game figures because it's not worth it. <laughs> like people's charge 40 or $50 for this crane game figure. That is cheap quality. You would mm. spend $10 at an arcade in Japan to probably get, um, and they're selling it for like 40, 50 bucks. But it's like people don't know about that. So they're like, oh, I'm, I'll pay 40 bucks for this thing. Like, that's yeah. fair. Um, but like the, the only figures I ever spend money on are like the expensive Good Smile figures. Because Good Smile is the best quality figures in my opinion. Um, so that was the one thing I re- regretted not getting into the con and seeing was the Good Smile booth. Because mm-hmm. they're always like ridiculous. I'm hoping and uh, we're going to go to BlizzCon this year. We all have tickets and things like that. I'm hoping they have the Nendroids of the... Um, Overwatch characters. Um, they've been promoting uh, May, Tracer, and Mercy, um, as well as a couple others. Um, but I hope that they have them available at Biz- BlizzCon because I will definitely spend money on that. So I got we'll have to see. Um, today I picked up the. I probably could have waited, but I picked up the the Diva in Mech Pop uh, Funko Pop figure. Don't buy Funko Pops, dude. Funko what are you Pops talking are about, shit. dude? Funko I like Pops Funko are not Pop. shit. I like Funko Pops. <laughs> Me too. I, I like there's uh, a specific style. I'm not gonna, and I like I'm not gonna get into yeah, that. There are different styles. Like I, I like vinyls too. I but don't. Anyways, before we get off on another tangent, we we, we should wrap it up here. We're <laughs> yeah. we're reaching the end of our of our rope here. So and the um, only one that I'm bought just gonna, stuff, huh? You yeah, I didn't buy anything. No, I was gonna buy a hat. I would have bought. I would have bought like, stuff nah. if I was allowed into the con. <laughs> <laughs> you should have just gone another day. But you Although, had things to well, do. I have. I technically only bought mostly Love Live, so that's not even. It's only one yeah, thing. I was going to buy a hat, and then I was looking at the uh, Zelda sh- etched shot glass, like it had the logo. And I was like, I don't need either of those things, and so I didn't buy either. Um, 
But yeah, so, you know, definitely we're tentative on whether we're going to go again as a group, but we'll, we'll talk about it again when, uh, when it comes up. Um, I want to mention, just check out uh, our YouTube for any content that's come out. I know Rolando released a couple blog posts about um, Sayakano. He talked about the last episode and then the huge long one of all the episodes, like five through ten. Um, <laughs> yeah. Check out, take a look at that stuff if you watch Sayakano and uh, look out for the next uh, Sakurada special because it's continuing to this season and we're probably going to be doing a recording on that pretty soon. Um, other than that, check us out on Twitter at Anime on Draft. Uh, check us out on our WordPress where you can have access to all our videos, blog posts like I was just mentioning. That is animeondraft.wordpress.com. Um, we also have a Facebook anime on draft um and an instagram as well you can find all of that on our wordpress so definitely check it out um that's it for us today here at anime on draft this was episode 13 later on everybody and then uh, for all fellow americans happy fourth and then uh, belated to happy canada day to our canadian listeners indeed later on dude